Welcome, good morning everyone. So today um we continue our lesson, okay, with control and regulation. So basically you're going to learn about the nervous system. Okay, so for the, today's uh video, it will be only on the organization of the nervous system in humans. Okay, so this will be a very short video. Okay, so this is the this diagram here shows you the human nervous system. Okay. And the human nervous system consists of the central nervous system, which is uh, normally we call it CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, which is PNS. Okay, I'm sure most of you know already the existence of these two nervous systems, okay, which made up our um, complex nervous system, the CNS and the PNS. Now, the CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord. This spinal cord is being protected by our backbone, okay, or also known as the vertebral column. Okay. Now, this CNS is the integrative and control center for the nervous system, right? While the peripheral nervous system is the communication lines between the central nervous system and the rest of the body or simply said our peripheral nervous system connects our central nervous system to the rest of our body right and this peripheral nervous system consists of cranial nerves which can be found in the brain okay and then spinal nerves which are the extensions of nerves from the um, spinal cord okay now this peripheral nervous system okay um consists of two division which is the sensory division or afferent division and the motor division or efferent division okay afferent means uh the um the source of the impulse efferent means where the impulse is being uh, gives out to where it reaches to okay Meaning to say the impulse exits the central nervous system and while the afferent division means the afferent means where the impulse okay reaches the central nervous system okay now you can see this diagram here okay the blue ones represent the sensory division okay now where does the impulse comes from from our sensory from sorry from our receptors okay now so our receptors such as they can be found in our skin or the lining of our stomach okay these receptors will detect stimulus after this receptors detect stimulus these receptors will produce impulse and this impulse will travel to our central nervous system via the peripheral nervous system so the impulse travels to the central nervous system so afferent okay so the sensory division okay consists of somatic which is cells of our body and visceral sensory nerve fibers okay the sensory division conducts impulses from the receptor to the central nervous system okay and then this impulse after it reaches the nervous the central nervous system it will be processed okay and a response in the form of impulse will travel to the targeted organ okay via the motor division or efferent division so motor or efferent division consists of motor nerve fibers and this motor division conducts impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors our effectors are muscles and glands okay now this motor or efferent division Okay, further divide into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. Okay, now somatic nervous system okay consists of somatic motor, meaning to say it consists of voluntary actions. While this autonomic nervous system they are connected to the visceral motor, which gives out the involuntary control. Okay. Somatic nervous system conducts impulses from the CNS to the skeletal muscles. Okay, while the autonomic nervous system conducts impulses from the 
central nervous system to the cardiac muscles, move muscles, and glands. Can you see how these two, um, how this um, somatic nervous system and autonom autonomic nervous system divides the function of the motor division? Okay, so we need to say the somatic nervous system they do not conduct impulses from the central nervous system to the glands. Okay, because the control of this glands is by involuntary control. So, um, to conduct impulses from the CNS to this glands is the job for the autonomic nervous system. Right? Now, a closer look of this autonomic nervous system is further divided into sympathetic division and parasympathetic division. And like what I've explained in the classroom, parasympathetic division slows down. Okay, the reaction of something para slowing down okay while sympathetic it increases okay so sympathetic division it mobilizes the body system during activity okay as well as for the fight or flight responses while the parasympathetic division it tries to conserve energy or it gives out relaxing responses okay and this parasympathetic division also promotes housekeeping functions during rest. Okay, this question came up 2013. Okay, the comparison of the effects of the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system on organ are shown in the table below. Okay, so which are true of the above comparisons? So like what I've mentioned earlier, parasympathetic, it slows down something okay it relaxes uh, our body okay those are response while synthetic is the other way around okay so let's see um you try to answer this question first okay one minute from now so you may pause the video okay none <clears throat> all right So, um, uh, like what I've said earlier, parasympathetic, it slows down something, right? So, increases, look at option number two, okay? For parasympathetic, increases the cardiac output. Increases is the other way around. So, you may cross out this option, okay? <clears throat> now, what about the other options? Okay, constricts and dilates, okay? Now, when we, our body is responding towards um, a situation, okay, especially the, the pupil of the eye, pupil of the eye will dilate if it sense, okay, our body sense for um, something that is um, urgent or emergency, okay. Such an example is the fight of the fight or flight response. So this will dilate the pupils of the eye, okay. So meaning to say. In the sympathetic nervous system, it causes the eye, the pupils of the eyes to dilate. Okay, when the pupil of the eyes dilates, means more um, <coughs> lights can enter the eye. Okay, so this is to prepare our body for um, an extreme or a fast response. While in parasympathetic nervous system, it will constrict the pupil of the eye. When it constrict, meaning to say it will limit the amount of lights to enter the eyes. So this is more on towards um, relaxing our body. Okay, so option one is correct. Okay, since option one and three, okay, has the dilates. So let's look at option three. Dilates the bronchioles in the lungs. Yes. Why? When the when the bronchioles in the lungs are being dilated, what happened? More air can enter the lungs to prepare our body for an emergency response. Okay, and parasympathetic nervous system constrict the bronchial. So meaning to say, it it tries to limit the um, volume of air to enter the lungs. This is uh, a response to relaxing our body. So the answer is one and three. Okay, so it will be A. Okay. Now, let's take a closer look on the central nervous system. Okay. 
which is the brain okay so this is the brain which consists of the forebrain okay you can see the forebrain here the forebrain is fully divided into cerebrum thalamus and hypothalamus okay so these three cerebrum the front part of your head okay cerebrum thalamus hypothalamus so this forebrain receives and integrates sensory information from nose eyes and ears as well as uh, for your um, voluntary actions okay and then we have the cerebral cortex right which is which is um behind your head there okay it interacts with the limbic system for your emotions and memory okay <clears throat> and then we have the midbrain okay this is the midbrain okay that coordinates reflex responses to sight and sound okay and finally we have the hind brain which consists of the pons medulla oblongata and cerebrum cerebellum sorry okay and this hind brain control reflexes of respiration blood circulation and movement okay a close look of the brain okay the only thing i want to stress out here is the gray matter and white matter for our brain okay apparently the, the white matter is inside <clears throat> while the gray matter is on the outside okay this will be the other way around for our um, spinal cord okay all right now this is the structure of the spinal cord as you can see from here okay the gray matter is apparently in the middle while the white matter is on the outside now i've been talking about this white and gray matter what are they okay this white matter okay they appear as white because of the highly dense myelinated accents something to say in this um white matter region there are many myelinated accents okay now if we look at the gray matter okay the gray matter here it appears gray because of the um highly dense okay number of cell bodies of interneurons and motor neurons the same goes for the brain okay the gray matter which is on the outside okay appear gray because of the highly dense of the cell bodies of interneurons and motor neurons okay all right so as we as you can see from this diagram here okay the spinal cord is protected by the backbone okay this is the backbone and this is the spinal cord okay so this is how it appear okay the spinal cord and this is the uh, vertebral column backbone okay All right, now let's take a look at the main cells of the nervous system. Okay, so particularly um, the cells of the nervous system, they consist of neurons and neuroglia. Okay, neurons are nerve cells involved in transmission of impulse from one nerve cell to another nerve cell. While neuroglia, okay, they are non-excitable cells of the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system and functions to support and protect the neurons. Okay, it's a video here. Take a look at this video. Okay, credit to the owner of this video. All right. Human anatomy. Neuron. The nervous system is an essential part of the human body that helps the transmission of signals across the various parts of the body. Or it releases messages back and forth from the brain to the different parts of the body and also helps in the coordination of voluntary and involuntary actions of the body. At the cellular level, the nervous system consists of a special type of cell called the neuron, also known as the nerve cell. The neurons connect to each other using a synapse, which is a structure that acts like a pathway connection that transmits signals to other cells to form the nervous system. Neurons have special structures that allow them to send signals rapidly and precisely to other cells by providing a common pathway 
for the passage of these electrochemical nerve impulses. Neurons are responsive in nature, by which we imply that the neurons respond to feelings and communicate the presence of that feeling to the central nervous system, which in turn is processed and sent to the other parts of the body for action. The neurons are the basic constituents of the brain, vertebral spinal cord, the ventral nerve cord, and the peripheral ganglia, which is a mass of nerve cell bodies. Neurons can be categorized into three types, sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons. Sensory neurons allow us to receive information from the outside world through our senses. The sensory neurons evoke the sensation of touch, pain, vision, hearing, and taste. These are usually present in the sensory organs, like the eyes, inner ear, and so on, which send the signals to the spinal cord and the brain. Interneurons communicate and connect with each other, and represent the majority of neurons in our brain. They allow us to think, see, and perceive our surroundings. Motor neurons are neurons that receive impulses from the spinal cord or the brain and send them from the muscles causing muscular contraction and these also affect the gland secretion. A typical neuron has a soma in its center, which contains the nucleus of the cell. And hence, this is where the protein synthesis occurs. The neural function is based on the synaptic signaling, the pathway that helps in the transmission of signals, process, which is partly electrical and partly chemical. The electrical aspect depends on the property of the neuron's membrane. Every neuron is surrounded by a plasma membrane, which is a bilayer of lipid molecules that are comprised of various protein structures. A lipid bilayer is a powerful electrical insulator, but in neurons, many protein structures embedded in the membrane are electrically active. Cell division cannot take place in neurons as they lack one of the two cylindrical cellular structures that aid in cell division. This is consistent with the simple cell division nature of the cell. Dendrites are the extensions of the cell with many branches, whose structures can be called as a dendritic tree. They protect from the cell body and are sometimes referred to as fibers. They are also called as afferent processes because they transmit impulses to the neuron cell body. There is only one axon that projects from each cell body, which is a finer cable-like projector. It is usually elongated and carries impulses away from the cell body, that is, away from the soma. It is called a efferent process. Many axons are surrounded by a segmented white fatty substance called myelin sheets. Human and Okay, class. So the three types of neurons here. Okay, we have the sensory neuron or afferent neuron, and then we have interneuron, and we have the motor neuron or efferent neurons i'm sure you are very familiar with these neurons you have learned this all right when you were in form 4 and form 5 okay so, so this is a quick recap here a sensory neuron has a body cell which is um along on the along the um, axon okay this is the body cell and the motor neuron has a body cell which is at one end of the um axon right and interneuron, you can see this is how an interneuron look like. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at this neuroglia. Okay. This neuroglia they can they are found in both peripheral nervous system as well as in the CNS. Okay. Now the ones or the neuroglia that are found in the central nervous system they are the oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, microglia, and ependymal cells okay so now of all these um, neural clear in the central nervous system I just want to highlight on the oligodendrocytes okay the others you can read on your own okay these oligodendrocytes okay they malinate the central nervous system action as well as provide structural structural framework you can see these oligodendrocytes they are interconnected with each other okay so they are accents here okay because these oligodendrocytes they myelinate the um, accent in the central nervous system 
Okay, now, neural glia found in the peripheral nervous system are the satellite cells, okay, and the Schwann cells. Now, you read on your own on the satellite cells. I'm not going to highlight on this. Okay, now, the Schwann, Schwann cells, okay, capital S here, okay, the Schwann cell surrounds the axons in the peripheral nervous system. Okay, when this Schwann cell surrounds the axon, what happens? This Schwann cell will form, will cause the um, axon in the peripheral nervous system to be myelinated. Okay. And then the Schwann cells are responsible for myelination of the peripheral axons. Yes. Like what I mentioned earlier, the Schwann cells will myelinate the axons. And the Schwann cells also participate in repair process of the injury of any axons in the peripheral nervous system. Okay, this diagram here, you can see how these um, oligodendrocytes connect one axon with another axon. Right? Then we have this extrocyte here microglial cell here okay as well as the ependymal cells okay how they are connected with each other okay now this diagram here to show you how the accent being myelinated by the Schwann cell okay so this is the accent apparently okay this is the exolema of axon. Exolema is the plasma membrane. It's a special name. Okay. Given to the plasma membrane of the axon. Exolema. So you can see how the Schwann cell is circling around the axon to form the um, myelinated axon. Okay. Now, this is on one part of the axon. There is another. This is the whole axon. Sorry. This is the whole axon. Okay. Only one patch of the axon is being myelinated by the Schwann cell. Okay, and then there is another patch here, which is non being, um, the accent in this patch here is not being myelinated by the Schwann cell. And this particular part of the accent, or patch of the accent, that is non, not being myelinated by the Schwann cell is known as the knot of Renvier. Okay. Okay, so one question came out in 2013. Repeat paper. What is the function of the myelin sheet? What do you think so? Okay. So myelin sheet it cause a patch on the accent, okay, to be sort of like um not being able to conduct electricity. Okay. So the best answer here is it helps to speed up the conduction of impulses. Okay, this part speeding up the conduction of impulses, I will explain in the salutary conduction later on. Okay, so that's it for today. Okay, we continue with generation of action impulse in the next video. Bye.